The endocrine glands play a very important role in the physiology of reproduction. In this video, I'm going to talk about those hormones that aid in the physiological changes during pregnancy. I'm not going to go into very detail of these hormones and their mechanisms, but we're going to briefly learn about the major function of these hormones and some changes that occur in the endocrine glands during pregnancy. Hypothalamus is also known as the master of master endocrine gland because it controls the master endocrine gland pituitary. Hypothalamus produces gonadotropin releasing hormone from the preoptic area and this hormone moves through the blood vessels to stimulate anterior pituitary. Anterior pituitary produces gonadotropins such as follicular stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Follicular maturation takes place during the first half of the menstrual cycle. The hormones essential for follicular maturation are mainly follicular stimulating hormone and a small proportion of luteinizing hormone as well. About 20 graphene follicles develop simultaneously in the ovary and only one of them is able to ovulate. The ovulation takes place under the influence of luteinizing hormone. After ovulation, the graphene follicle shown in green color in this picture forms corpus luteum. The corpus luteum produces estrogen and progesterone hormone which are responsible for the preparation of endometrium for zygote implantation. These hormones, the estrogen and progesterone, are both steroidal hormones. Together, they play an important role in the maintenance of pregnancy. Estrogen causes hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the uterine myometrium, thereby increasing the accommodation capacity and the blood flow of the uterus. Progesterone in conjunction with estrogen stimulates growth of the uterus, causes decidual changes of the endometrium required for implantation. The syncytiotrophoblast cells of the placenta produces HCG hormone that prevents corpus luteum from degeneration. It maintains growth and stability of the corpus luteum so that it could continuously produce estrogen and progesterone for maintaining pregnancy. HCG hormone also stimulates Leydig cells of the male fetus to produce testosterone. Thus, it is indirectly involved in the development of male external genitalia as well. And it is also used for the diagnosis of pregnancy. Without HCG, Corpus luteum would degenerate to form white scar tissue called corpus albicans. After the development of the placenta, the corpus luteum degenerates and its function is now taken over by the placenta. So the placenta now produces the essential hormones and acts temporarily as a new powerhouse or endocrine organ. Progesterone inhibits the myometrial contraction by relaxing the uterine muscles to prevent premature expulsion of fetus. However, during labor, its level falls down. The estrogen, however, rises due to the formation of estriol, which is a form of estrogen during childbirth. The estrogen increases the receptor of a hormone in the uterine muscles. This hormone is released from the posterior pituitary and is called oxytocin. Oxytocin binds to its receptor in the uterine muscles and causes uterine contraction, thus inducing labor.
Oxytocin, with the help of high levels of estrogen, causes the release of prostaglandins, which may play a role in ripening of the cervix, that is, softening of the cervix to allow easy passage of the fetus. Placenta also produces a hormone called relaxin. Relaxin, as the name suggests, relaxes the sacroiliac joints and ligaments, especially pubic symphysis. Thus, it increases the diameter of pelvic outlet to accommodate the ba baby as well as to provide easy passage of the baby. It also helps in cervical ripening and widening. Human placental lactogen is synthesized by the syncytiotrophoblast of the placenta. It causes maternal lipolysis and promotes transfer of glucose and amino acids to the fetus. As a potent angiogenic hormone, it also helps to develop fetal vasculature. It promotes growth and differentiation of breast for lactation as well. Now coming on to the breast changes during pregnancy. Although lactation starts following delivery, the preparation for effective lactation starts during pregnancy. The physiological basis of lactation is divided into four phases. Number one, mammogenesis or preparation of breasts. Pregnancy is associated with remarkable growth of both ductal and lobular alveolar system of the breast. The hormones responsible for lobular alveolar system are progesterone, estrogen, prolactin, and adrenal steroids. And those responsible for ductal system are estrogen, adrenal steroids, and growth hormone. The next phase is lactogenesis or synthesis and secretion from the breast alveoli. The alveolar cells are the principal sites for production of milk. The hormones responsible are prolactin, thyroid hormone, growth hormone, and glucocorticoids. After the formation of milk, the next phase is ejection of milk or galactokinesis. During suckling of the nipples by the baby, a conditioned reflex is set up. Hypothalamus produces oxytocin and is released into the blood through posterior pituitary. Oxytocin contracts the myoepithelial cells of the breast and causes ejection of milk. The last phase is galactopoiesis or maintenance of lactation. Prolactin appears to be the single most important galactopoietic hormone. However, for maintenance of effective and continuous lactation, frequency of suckling, that is more than 8 times in a day, is also essential. Let's look at the changes of endocrine glands during pregnancy. First, on the pituitary gland. There is increase in weight by 30 to 50 percent and the gland is enlarged to about twice its normal size. This is principally due to hyperplasia of acetophilic prolactin secreting cells. Sometimes, the pituitary enlargement may impinge on the optic chiasma, causing bitemporal hemianopia. The pituitary gland during pregnancy becomes more susceptible to alterations in blood supply. Sudden hypotension following postpartum hemorrhage may cause infarction of the gland or commonly known as Sihan syndrome. Next on the thyroid gland. 
Renal clearance of iodine is increased due to increased glomerular filtration during pregnancy. Maternal serum iodine levels fall due to increased renal loss. This causes hyperplasia of the thyroid gland. However, pregnant women remain euthyroid. Fetal thyroid starts functioning after 12 weeks. Till then, the fetus is entirely dependent upon the maternal supply of thyroid hormone through the placenta for all neurologic development. Now on to the parathyroid gland. Maternal parathyroid hyperplasia occurs during pregnancy. The main functions of parathyroid hormone are to regulate the renal synthesis of 125-dihydroxyvitamin D3 and mobilization of calcium from bone. 125-dihydroxyvitamin D3 enhances calcium reabsorption from the kidneys and absorption from small intestines. This is required to meet the increase in demand for the growth of the fetus.